Hey everybody, welcome back to the Two Wheel Troubadour channel. Um, today, a spotlight of the LS2 Breaker Classic helmet. Um, I bought this helmet uh, recently. I bought it for, you know, specifically to experiment with as I uh, got used to moto vlogging. Um, I wanted something I didn't mind sticking 3M tape to and that sort of thing and uh, putting the mics inside and things like that. So um, I wanted something um, inexpensive, you know, something that wouldn't break the bank. I didn't really feel like, um, at the time that I made the decision to get into moto vlogging, I didn't really feel like sticking a bunch of stuff to my uh, showy. So I bought this. I went looking around on the, on the internet. Um, I've had some some inexpensive helmets in the past that I was very happy with um, from Scorpion. Everybody knows Scorpion now. They're pretty much um, you know a big player in the in the market. Um, but the LS2 brand caught my eye, not only at the price point, but also specifically on this one because of the, the design. Um, so I pulled the trigger on it, and I just wanted to show you guys, um, take you on a quick tour around the helmet, and show you what you get for the price point. And, you know, I've, I've put um, about 400 miles on this helmet now, and I'll give you some feedback on... on how it works in in application so let's uh go ahead and dig into this guy here comes with a nice cover actually it's better than the one showy gave me for my rf 1200 um break this guy out here so here we have the ls2 Breaker Classic. Okay, so the Breaker, the LS2 Breaker, comes in uh, solid colors: black, silver, white, gray, um, and it also comes with this design scheme called the Classic, which gives you this little um, Union Jack, uh, gives you the the LS2 logo and checkered flag, copper. Um, color is that copper color? I guess it's gold, gold color. Uh, lines on there. It's it's a nice looking helmet. You know, of course, me on a Triumph. As soon as I saw that Union Jack, I was like, ah, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, is it over the top a little bit? Eh, not really. It's not like, you know, it's not like I'm sporting a big giant Union Jack all over my helmet. Which hey, that's cool too for some. For me, I wanted something a little bit more subtle, but it is. And you know, tip of the hat to the to the brand of bike I ride. Um, so anyway, with that said, let's take a look at this guy here. It is uh, DOT and ECE certified. You know, good quality helmet, good safe helmet. Um, some of the big features that really caught my eye when I was looking at this helmet was it has a drop down visor built-in drop-down visor. Let's pop this one open. So there's your visor release. Bam. You are instant fighter pilot. The release is um, fairly smooth. It doesn't get hung up. Um, nice feature. And it doesn't add much weight, especially considering some of my older Scorpion helmets that um, come in at the exact same weight as this, but are um, without the drop-down visor. So this comes in at 3.1 pounds, which is, you know, a pretty light helmet. It's a, it's a thermoplastic polycarbonate helmet, um, which is typical in this price range. And, um, you know, LS2 has this listed on their website as a touring full face touring helmet which probably um, makes sense it's not a you know a race helmet per se it's a sport helmet but i've noticed in a full tuck 
that this helmet does tend to want to pull back on my head. It's one of my only, only real complaints of this guy is that I do find that it wants to pull back. Now you'll notice it's got some pretty aggressive ven ventilation here, right? And I'm assuming that has a lot to do with that, that airflow that wants to pull the helmet back. Um, but with that said, the airflow works nicely. Um, it's a good cool helmet, even though it's got some kind of some big clunky switches and it doesn't have an on off for the back ventilation. It's just a, an, an always on exit vent there. Um, what else about this guy? Nice feature. It has the eyeglass cut out for those who wear prescription glasses or those who prefer to wear sunglasses. That's a nice, a nice thing that it's designed for that. So you don't have to squish it in to your pads. Um, it has nice tight neck roll here. Um, it's got the newer type of magnetic release pads with the emergency pulls on it which is a nice safety feature. Um, and it has the clip instead of the D, double D rings. It's another one of my um, kind of pet peeves on this helmet. I'm still getting, this is the first helmet I've had with this kind of clip in, instead of the double D rings. And I don't really care for this. Um, I find that once when you're putting your helmet on, I find it's kind of hard to actually find where to put that in, right? It's, it's nice. It disengages nice and easily and fast, but I don't know. I, I, I just prefer the double D rings. I've just been used to it. Um, inside the helmet, I don't know if you can see in there, but it's, um, it has a re full removable liner, washable. And that's a nice feature. Some of my older Scorpions didn't have that. And boy, after, you know, a couple of thousand miles, not so pleasant. Sure, you can wash them, but, you know, if you wash your whole helmet. It's a, it's a fairly comfortable helmet. Um, this is a large size, which is the size I wear in, in multiple brands. Um, one thing I have noticed with this is that the cheek pads are still a little stiff and tight. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, after another four or 500 miles, they'll, they'll start to break in a little bit more. I still consider this in a break in period, um, having put four, three or 400 miles on it so far. It comes with a uh, chin pad here that I don't have in right now because it's pretty hot in Florida and I don't need it. Uh, this helmet is pretty noisy as far as helmets go. Um, I'm assuming it's probably because of this really aggressive ventilation they have, this big huge hood scoop up here. And this came in at, oh, I think I paid 170 US dollars for it. Um, would I recommend it? Sure. I think, I think it's money, you know, I think it was well worth the money. Um, I like the design of it. I like the look. Do I wish it was um, a little bit better in a, in a tuck? Yeah. What, do I wish it was quieter? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that's another critique I have of this. The drop down visor. It doesn't come down low enough for me. Um, I don't know if it's just the riding position where I'm at or if it's the design. I would prefer that they had designed this so it would come down, you know, another, at least another half an inch there, probably more like that. But my eyesight tends to catch the, the, the bottom edge of this and, and focuses on that. You know, it's too much of a, a distraction there. So that, that bothers me. Um, it's nice to have, don't get me wrong, it's nice to not have to switch out your visor if you know you're gonna be riding after dark. Um, but I wish it would have 
come down and covered the entire um, viewing surface here. The other thing is the, the visor is tinted in a, in a purple tint, which eh, I prefer other, I prefer more of a brown or a green tint than purple, but you know, that's just kind of nitpicking there, right? Um, other than that, I like it. It was a good deal for $170 and it suits the purpose and it's a good addition to my helmet collection. So I just wanted to share this with you. If you're interested in an in inexpensive but functional and safe helmet, there you go. The LS2 Breaker. This one with the classic design with the British uh, Union Jack on there. Pretty cool. I like it. So I uh, hope you found this useful and we'll see you soon. Bye guys.